Have you tried training methods that just didn't work? Do you feel that your pet is not getting his or her nutritional needs met? Are illnesses and bad behavior your daily norm? You're going to want to join me on the Pet Parenting Reset, where you'll hear interesting and informative interviews and get solutions to all your pet problems. I'm your host, Jessica L. Fisher. Welcome, welcome, you wonderful pet parent. Thank you so much for joining us again on the Pet Parenting Reset. And today I have an incredible guest for y'all. So without any further ado, let me go ahead and introduce you to April Henley of Dogs on the Run. Today we are going to be talking about choosing a pet sitter, which is so incredibly important. And April, April has... It, he, she has it down with dogs on the run. So April, I'm going to go ahead and hand it over to you to say hello to all of our wonderful listeners. Hello, everybody. Thank you so much, Jessica, for inviting me on. Um, I think it's so awesome to be able to reach out to your community and help everybody understand and know why it's important to be really particular when looking for a pet care professional. So I'm just so happy to be here. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us. And it is so incredibly, incredibly important to be picky. And I'm even right now, like, am I being too picky? Because I don't. I, I know I reached out to you before we moved because for those of you who don't know um, already, we recently moved from Southern California to Central Texas. And I literally started looking for a pet sitter. We've been here for more than three months now. And I probably started looking about three months before we moved and I still am struggling. <laughs> so I'm like, am I being too picky? I don't know. I think in this particular area that I live, there is a, it has grown so much there in such a short period of time, there is a huge deficit all around. Um, yes. in pet industry, veterinarians, um, yes. boarding, grooming. I mean, there is just a huge deficit. And I think that's one of the reasons why I'm having such such a struggle. So <laughs> um, yes. Dogs on the Run is in Southern California. So April, can you tell us a little bit more about what you do, how you started, how it has grown? Because boy, oh boy, I mean, even in the few short years that I've known you, it has just exploded. So tell me a little bit about that. Well, I started Dogs on the Run 18 and a half years ago. Um, and it was primarily because I, at the time, had a very, very needy dog who would uh, whine and cry. And I quit my job, my corporate job, and decided I was going to stay, be a stay-at-home mom for my dog. And I knew that if I was having these issues that other people had to have the same struggles. So here I was at 25 years old, out of college, and wasn't sure what I was going to do. And so I, a friend of mine said, let's, you should be a dog walker and pet sitter. And I was just like floored. I mean, this wasn't a career. This wasn't something that people grew up and said, I'm going to be a dog walker. So I started <laughs> Dogs on the Run, and it has just been an absolute amazing experience because I'm filled with such wonderful clients who it's a community of compassionate individuals and they're a lot better to work with than just the general public. So I love our clients and our pets. It's an amazing um, experience. And then once I started the company within three months, I was like, oh no, I have all of these families who are counting on me and relying on me. What if I get sick or what if something happens? So I was explaining this to a friend who's also a client and she said, I'm going to join your team. And that's how it kind of all started to evolve. And over the years, people that know that are in the animal industry and or our clients themselves have reached out to me and said, I want to work with dogs on the run. So it's a very, very intimate group. We do have approximately 100 pet care professionals throughout Southern California. And we're in Nashville, Tennessee. We have a couple people in Ohio. Uh, we were in Oregon before COVID, LA. But with COVID, I mean, we were 
there was no business. So we closed down and, you know, just was very minimal in what we did. And here we are today, but we're thriving. It's so busy. Like it's insane with all these COVID puppies. <laughs> it, it is crazy. And um, we need you here in Georgia. <laughs> yes. Yes. I know. I, I have to say, like when I started searching for everything, because I'm I'm still struggling with it. I started searching for a vet as well at the same time. And I'm still struggling. Like we have, have fortunately haven't had any like major incidents happen, um, but a couple of minor things. So I've had opportunities to test out a couple of vets and I'm just like, no. Like, no. <laughs> and um, so, yeah, there's just such a huge deficit here in our little. Well, and on top, on top of it right now, I think that even our vets, our groomers, mm -hmm. even our pet sitters, everyone is so bombarded because those of us who are good, diligent, doing things right, it's not, it's because we care, we take our time, which makes our, it very limited on our availability. And we're not as available as we once were. And so it makes yeah. it really difficult to be because we can't clone ourselves and be yeah. everywhere. But. Yeah, I know. Well, yeah. And, and just with this whole process, my husband has kind of jokingly said to me, we need to start a pet sitting business. And I'm like, oh my gosh, that would be wonderful. Oh my gosh, I don't have the bandwidth for that. <laughs> it's exhausting. <laughs> it's a lot. <laughs> yeah, no, it's crazy. Um, but and, and it's so funny because I woke up this morning and I do what you should never do as per usual and check my emails as soon as I wake up. And um, Coco Therapy sent out an email today about finding the perfect pet sitter for Thanksgiving. And I'm like, you're about six months too late. But <laughs> yes. yes. And it's true. We are turning bookings away. People are contacting us right now for Christmas and Thanksgiving and we have zero availability. I have to tell them like, you guys can check back in a couple of weeks to see if we've had cancellations or changes. But right now, and the other thing that I'm finding too, is that a lot of our pet care professionals are choosing to be at home with their families this year. You know, they might not have been able to go the last couple of years yeah. because of COVID. So even though we might have people who are not technically working, they're making the decision to be with their families. And we have to respect that too, even though this is our busiest, craziest time of the year. Yeah, absolutely. It is so important to, to get that time with your family. Yes. And I know, yeah, a lot of people will try to like rotate, like one year they'll, they'll work Thanksgiving and not Christmas or, yeah. you know, and then next year vice versa, that kind of thing. <laughs> we try, we try not to burn out. Right? Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. And that's another important part to the quality care is taking the time to deliver exactly what our clients are in need of and um, not just rushing or just doing a job. Right. This right. Is, that's another differentiator between dogs on the run and other people that are just doing pet care on the side. They don't they're not taking the time. They're just putting the food in the bowl. They might pick up pet waste. Maybe not, you know, yeah. a real pet care professional will take their time to check on the pet's health, behavior, mood, what, how are we doing, you know, making sure your house is safe and secure. We know what to look for. And that's one of the biggest uh, differentiators between somebody who just does it as a hobby or on the side to make a couple of bucks. Yeah, that's actually one of the questions um, that I'm going to ask you about in just a little bit, because I have... I just, uh, I just have not as much experience as you, but <laughs> I've had so many good and bad experiences that it's like, oh my goodness, like we need to get this information out to people because I see, especially this time of year, constantly people are posting like, oh, I'm going out of town this weekend. I need somebody to watch my dog. Like, wait, wait, this weekend? Like you are insane. <laughs> no, this weekend. <laughs> Our clients um, don't typically do that, right? So our clients are planning for their pets. They would not book their airfare until they have locked in their pet care professional. That's me. Totally. And many, many of our clients will even plan their vacations around their favorite pet sitter's availability. Yeah, I know. Yes. I, I mean, I know we've, we've done, we've, 
done that. Like, yeah, okay, you're not available this week, but you're available the following week. Well, then we're going to move everything <laughs> to the following week. Like, because you, you, have, have you have someone, we, Dogs on the Run, we try to be a part of a family. We're there for you. We have a relationship with your pets. We, we want to grow with you and your family. So there's a relationship there and a level of trust. And so they, my clients will literally book their vacation. Hey, we're thinking of traveling in June next year, you know, 2022, yeah. but what, what does your schedule look like? You know, it's planning around because they don't want just a stranger in their home. They don't want just somebody to do a job. Yeah. No, that's so very true. And one of the reasons why I have never, ever to anybody recommended, like, not to call any anything out, but like those apps out there, it's like you have no idea who's coming into your house. Some of them don't even meet the professional. You don't right. even meet the yeah, I know. Or see how they interact with your pet. I, I, could, I couldn't. But <laughs> um, so, yeah, with, with me having made two huge moves in a decade. Um, I have always started my search just by asking around for recommendations, first and foremost with a veterinarian if I can, but here I still haven't found a vet that I like and love and trust. So I have gone to social media and it has been a huge struggle. And I know that that's how your business has grown through recommendations. Like you don't advertise or anything like that. And what that really boils down to is the fact that, you know, you have to have experience and you have to have great, like not just good, but great service. Um, so how do you find, and you kind of kind of mentioned it earlier, but how do you find people to join your team and what do you look for? Well, I think that's a really great question. Um, most of the people that work with dogs on the run are, have been clients, they get it. Right. They know, we know, we know them. We've been in their home. We've taken care of their pets and we see how well they're treated. So uh, there's a handful of our pet care professionals who are actually clients. And I think that's a, a big deal. Um, we have vet techs on our team because we know our local vets, groomers, pet stores. We have been around and people know us. I feel like our, the pet industry, the real pet lovers, it's a small community and we all know each other. We have, we share a lot of the same clients. And so uh, vet techs, groomers, um, people who work at the local pet stores, they know us. And if they are looking to try something different or do something different, they'll contact me directly um, through our website and fill out the resume of experience. And then we bring them in to do background checks. We interview them. And I ask myself, Hmm, do I feel comfortable using this person? Would I want to? Taking into consideration their compassion, their empathy, and experience. What, you know, I understand that there's people who specialize in big dogs, small dogs. There's people who aren't comfortable giving, you know, sub Q fluids or insulin injections. What is their comfort level? And then listening to our clients to find out what are their needs. And then what I'm doing behind the scenes is making match for these clients. Yeah, that actually kind of rolls into the next question I have for you, because I know I have very specific needs that, and like you were saying, when you quit your job, your dog had what kind of sounds like possibly separation anxiety. <laughs> and when we adopted Kim, she had really bad separation anxiety. And because we have worked so hard um, to help her overcome the anxiety that she has had, we have found that having somebody live in our home while we're gone That's makes it easier for her yes. um, so that she doesn't have such huge setbacks. And so that's, you know, that's a specific need that I know here specifically, almost nobody does. Um, they just want to come in your house and leave in, you know, 15, 20 minutes and then come back in a few hours. And I'm like, no, this isn't going to work for me. <laughs> um, so how do you manage all of your individual clients and, you know, really be that matchmaker for, I mean, if you have a, a, a secret sauce, you don't have to share it, but 
Um, so most of the clients, they're referred by other clients or, you know, they come in to us and we do it at intake for each of the clients. We find out, you know, what area they're in, what type of pets they have, whether there's any health or behavior issues that we need to know about. That's an important part because we take that into consideration. Um, then we find out the dates and usually the clients are really good at knowing what type of services they're looking for. But sometimes if they've never, if this is their first pet, we can kind of dive into what is your routine with your dog? Um, coming out of COVID, I realized too that I have to ask people now, how long are you comfortable leaving your dog alone? Because a majority of these pets weren't left alone during the coronavirus, the pandemic, right? So if their dog is not used to being alone, we can't just, you know, not be there. So we have had to pivot the services that we offer to offer even more 24 hour care mm -hmm. to be there. So we take really great pride in doing the evaluation on the intake um, to find out what they do, how they do it. And then we find somebody who has the availability in our team to potentially help this family. Yeah, and you do a really good, because I know I have called you more than once crying. <laughs> I don't know how you, you manage people like me sometimes. No, it's because you care. And I want to, um, I want to send you exactly what it is your, your needs are, whether it's for the cats or the dog or taking into consideration medications. You know, do you need a vet tech that can be there around the clock? Um, sometimes I might not have anyone available, but I always refer people to other resources. Um, some of the other organizations that your clients can go to, your friends, um, can go to NAPS, the National Association of Professional Pet Sitters. You can go on their website and find a pet sitter, put in your zip code, and it'll pull up other available dog walkers and pet sitters in the area. Another organization that I belong to is the professional or er, um, PSI Pet Sitters International, and it's the same type of platform where you can put in your zip code. And I feel like they do a really great, great job of continuing education for pet sitters. Yeah, absolutely. And there, there are a lot of resources out there other than the teenager down the street, right? Yes. Yes. <laughs> and the teenager down the street, like, don't get me wrong, they need to start somewhere too. So yes. I'm sure there will always be <laughs> some sort of need out there for them. Um, yes. So n nothing, nothing against them, but uh, I have I have come to learn, especially since meeting um, you and your team, that having that team is so incredibly important because there is a backup plan. And that's really in one of the big biggest ways that you do differ from that teenager down the street, right? Or that family down the street that just kind of does this on the side that there is a backup plan. And I know living in Southern California, I was caught, I think twice in the eight years we lived there, we had, we were like, the pet sitter was sitting at our house watching the TV, waiting to see if we were gonna have to evacuate for wildfires, right? Yes. And while we were out of town. And that's like the only times that it ever happened to us <laughs> was when we were out of town. And that scared the living bejesus out of me, right? And right. that really drilled into me the importance of having that backup plan. So do you wanna elaborate a little bit on Yes, absolutely. So being in business for 18 years, the other thing that pet owners should take into consideration when hiring a pet sitter, whether it's an individual or a company, is to find out and ask them, what is the backup plan in the event something happens to you? It doesn't hurt to ask your pet sitter for an emergency contact. If you are working with someone who is operating as they're the pet sitter and they don't have anybody else working with them, then what is, a, what is your backup plan as the pet owner? If you can't, you're trying to call and get in touch with your pet sitter and they're not answering, their phone is turned off, you don't know where they're at, 
we need to have a backup plan as the pet owner. But when you work with a company like Dogs on the Run, we have your reservation in our system and we're making sure that each one of our pet care professionals make it to the client's home to ensure that no pets go without care. We also have the network. So if there were a fires or there was an emergency in the area that we would contact you, what, what do you want us to do? Do you have a specific plan? We usually, we work together to make sure an emergency situation that the clients, the pets are taken care of. So that's, that's a, that's a big important thing because things happen and yeah. we are working with only one pet care professional. What's their backup plan? Get an emergency contact in the event you can't reach them. But it's nice to go with a company where you know you have the owner's cell phone number and you can call anytime with any questions, comments, or concerns. Yeah, absolutely. Because um, like I, I have already mentioned, I, I have called you crying more than once. <laughs> <laughs> um, and yeah, having like just knowing because you know, if you're out in the middle of the ocean on a cruise ship, it's not like you can get back in the next four hours to, you know, make sure your dog is fed and has a potty. You can't do that. Right. right. Um, yeah, it's so, so incredibly important. And that's what I, I actually, and I probably shouldn't have been so um, matter of fact about, about it, but like, I was just so frustrated after talking to pet sitter after pet sitter after pet sitter here. And it's just them. And one lady, I actually said to her, I was like, so if you fall and break your leg, what am I, what am I going to do? And she was like, um, I mean, I'll do everything I can. I'm like, yeah, but if you fall and break your leg, like, what are you going to do? <laughs> right. Well, I, think, I think the other thing people don't realize is that, you know, if they're, what do they do with their own pets when they're staying at your home is another really common question. Mm -hmm. What if they are in a car accident? What is their backup plan? What if they had an, a family emergency? What is their backup plan to take care of you as the pet owner? Things happen. Yeah. And yeah. we just, we, I, I'm happy to report though, we don't have a lot of those emergency type situations where we have to bring in another pet care professional to finish out a job. But if we saw on our dashboard that somebody didn't make it to your house, we would contact you and say, you know, we'd start the search to find the professional, but also contact you and say, hey, Jessica, you know what? This person is, didn't make it to your house. Do you give me permission to go there and be there for you so that you can know that the owner of the company is coming in to take care of your pets for you? Yeah. You know what I mean? So there's all I will drop everything to be there. It, it makes such a difference, like as the person on vacation or having to go home for a funeral or whatever it may be, it makes such a huge difference knowing that you're there and there is a team of people that can fill in if anything happens. Like I can actually go on vacation and relax. Whereas, you know, 10 years ago, that would not have happened. <laughs> right. So we may have spoiled you a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> with constant updates and Paul reports and communication. Yes. But I think the other important thing to tell pet owners is to set your pet care professional up for success, right? When you're doing the free in-home consultations, have a list, have your routine. If the pet care professional isn't used to doing what you do or you know you're as the pet owner you're in control and i think by setting the example telling them what you do how you do it giving them i mean six pages of notes is okay i'm just saying it is okay to have it all written down so that we can you know meet your expectations and deliver exactly what you're looking for it also sets the tone to let the pet care professional know that you're serious like you have a schedule and you want to stick to it as much as possible. Um, I think that helps set them up for success. And then also telling them your expectations with communication. You know, how many times a day do you want to hear from your pet sitter? If, how do you want them to communicate with you? Do you want a phone call? Do you want a text message? Or would you prefer an email because you're on a ship far, far away? You know, what is it? How can how can your pet care professional deliver 
what you're looking for with your expectations. So it's really important as the pet parent to set us up for success by telling us what it is you need. It is. You're so right. And it's so important. Like you just said, it's, it's a really fine line because this is a business transaction. But at the same yes. time, this is somebody that you want to treat like family and them to treat you like family because that's what you're expecting for your pets. Right? It's, very, it's very, very intimate. We're in your home and we're taking care of your fur baby. And it's it as a pet owner, we have to remember that it is a business and we don't as much as we might say, make yourself at home. No, it's still a professional service and you can still have a relationship with your pet care professional. But it's important to just set those boundaries from the beginning of what your expectations are and communicating that to the pet sitter. Yeah, I know I have like a book <laughs> um, of instructions and notes that I always leave. And it always changes um, yes. every single time be because whether my, my cats are eating something different or there's a new supplement or whatever it may be, like it always changes. So yeah. I always have to update it. But at the same time, so like that's the, this is, this is what we're going by. This is, you know, yes. X, Y, Z. Yes. But at the same time, I always leave them a gift and bring them back a gift and thank them so much and um you know make sure they have snacks and treats and <laughs> things at the house that you know and they know where everything is and they know it's okay to use our dishes and it's okay to cook a meal like go you know it, yes. that, it's okay <laughs> for yes. you to do that. Um, right. I always tell my professionals too I'm like look if you love our clients and show them and that you love them and you love what you're doing, you're rewarded tenfold. I mean, it comes back. And that's how we have the ongoing relationship. Dogs on the run, we don't have a high turnover. Our people, our clients and our professionals, they're like lifers. They're forever. They're family. You know? Yeah, I still have I, people who have come in my home and taken care of my animals through your company that even after they no longer were able to take care of my animals, whether we moved or just situations changed, I still, you know, send them a Christmas card or even some of them bring them, Christ, you know, take Christmas yeah. presents to their house yes. or, you know, whatever it may be because they yes. are just, they became part of your family. family. Yeah, somebody who came in my house. Yes, um, it's intimate, it's intimate care. It, it, it so is. And that first meet and greet, um, I, I know you mentioned it, and I just want to really quickly talk about it a little bit more because it is so important. The first time the pet professional and your pet meet should not be when you're leaving, right? And, and you need to be able to see the interaction between them and your pet because I know that has that, that makes or breaks it for me that yes. first interaction. So do you want to um, talk, uh, uh, you know, elaborate a little bit more on that? Yes, absolutely. So the free in-home consultation is critical. Uh, we don't typically do a job without meeting the client and the pets. Um, it's so important on multiple levels. Again, the, the pet parents should tell the pet care professional exactly what it is they are in need of any pet behaviors, uh, any health issues that we need. So doing that in-home consultation is important. Um, let's say you have a trip six months from now that you're trying to find a pet sitter for. Yes, do the consultation right away. Even though you might have the reservation, don't wait until last minute the week before you leave to be like, here's my dog, here's my house. No, meet with them in advance. And then if you're still unsure or you want your dog to have the relationship with your pet care professional so they're familiar with it, give them a trial run. Have them come once a week or once every two weeks just to keep it refreshed. And you get to build that relationship with them to see how that pet care professional works leading up to your big trip, you know, that you might have planned. So, yeah, yes. In home consultation. So, so very important. I, I know it has, it has definitely been like 
I I have I've only met one person I think that it was just like sorry this is this isn't gonna work but <laughs> um, your dog especially sometimes cats will too but like your dog will let you know if that if it's if if it's a no go so yes. pay attention to as yeah. much as you want to talk to and get in you know get to know the person coming in your house pay attention to your pet because that's gonna be like. Yeah, yes. that's going to tell you everything you need to know if that, but m more often than not, it has always been like Kim has absolutely loved the person and wanted to, you know, follow them around the, the whole time. So um, it is, it's, it's been great, it's, but it's so important. Yes, it's also part of our hiring process. We always have dogs and cats in our office, you know, coming in and they really to watch the professionals and how they interact with the pet. Is it like mm, they don't really exist or are they like all up in the pet? And then how is the pet responding to the person? Yeah, absolutely. So um, is there anything that we missed or any other tips that you would like to let people know out there? Um, I think we covered it. <laughs> I think we covered it. Like I said, you know, finding a pet sitter is very, very difficult. Check with your vet. That's always my first go to. Also, check those other references the NAPS and PSI. You know, interview those people, call around. Um, the other really important tips that I would give the clients and pet owners is um, make sure that your professional is bonded and insured. Ask for a copy of it. Then take the next step to even call to make sure it's in good standings. Fortunately, again, in our company, I think in 18 and a half years, we've had one claim that wasn't our fault, it was truly an accident. But we, it's important to make sure that your pet care professional is in good standings with the insurance company. Um, ask for a copy of their background check. Do your due diligence as the pet owner. We here at Dogs on the Run do background checks on everybody. Um, we also make sure that everybody has a valid business license so that it just is another layer of professionalism that we require for all of our professionals. Ask for references, another important thing. Talk to them. Re ask them for uh, references on pet care, uh, pet parents that they've helped previously, not their mom and dad or their girlfriend, right? Or right. When we, they need people that they have cared for their pets. Um, that's a really funny thing, but it's true. <laughs> it happens. My husband is out of town, so I, I don't have any a referee for Kim. We normally, um, anytime she sees anybody like, walking by or where the, the area we're living in, um, we built a house and most of the houses further down the street are still uh -huh. under construction. So there's like people coming uh -huh. all the time. <laughs> yes, she's the guard dog. Well, the noise, right? It's yes. always the noise. Oh my goodness, yes. Um, but normally, you know, I'd get up and go see what, what she's barking at to, to ease He's her mind, but <laughs> I don't have a referee to help me today. <laughs> Cute. Cute. So, well, April, um, if someone is in Southern California or you said Nashville and yes. a certain part of Ohio too, yeah. um, how can they find you? They can oh. go to dogsontherun.com. <laughs> And even if you are not in those areas, um, but you just want to follow Dogs on the Run on social media, you do have social media, right? Yep, Dogs on the Run on Facebook and Instagram. <laughs> Wonderful. Because um, you are always posting one or whoever is doing it. Yeah. <laughs> always posting very cute pictures. And I think you highlight a pet professional of the week as well. Yes. I'm not yes. mistaken. Um, yes. And if you are in Southern California, when you are a Dogs on the Run client, I know you offer so like lately, especially since COVID, like there has been so many things that you've expanded with. So if you um, do reach out to Dogs on the Run, if you are in Southern California, you are really in for a treat with everything that she has to offer for, for you as a pet parent. And um, yeah, so thank you so much, April, for coming on and talking to everyone about finding a pet sitter. It's so, it's, it's such a, one of those really funny things that I, I just am always seeing people on social media, especially in like our local groups, 
they just don't, I want to just walk into these people's houses and be like, what are you doing? Like you, they just don't <laughs> prepare. And <laughs> it's a very last minute thing for so many people. And yeah. most people around here where I am, I, I have come to realize are just hiring the teenager down the street. And I'm like, I'm not on board with this. <laughs> your, your pets are your children. So yeah. much, so much. Yeah, you have to prepare and it, wait, especially if it's a holiday. Like I, I think one time you even told me like, if it's a holiday, at least a year, like a year in advance, if you can. I, I, I think I have your answer for you though. You just need to let us know in advance and we will fly to you. Yeah. I'm serious. I know Yvette will jump on a plane and be there for you in a heartbeat. That is so funny because before we left, JR, my husband actually asked Yvette if she would do that. <laughs> yes, we have done it before. We will follow our clients wherever they need us. Oh it's, my goodness, that yes. might that might work. I'll have to talk to him about it because <laughs> I twice now. I mean, we've only been here for less than four months, uh, and he's had to go out of town twice. That's, he's on his second trip right now. Um, one time was an emergency. His son was in the hospital and had to have two emergency surgeries, and he had to go by himself because we didn't have anybody. And now he's you know this is a work trip that he wanted me to go on, but I couldn't because we don't have anybody. <laughs> Right. So just, just call us. Let <laughs> us know. We'll we'll see what we can do. But we're always we always want to help you if we can. That is so sweet. I actually will talk to him about that because it might be <laughs> um it, it even though it would cost a little bit more for you know planes, okay. there, yeah. it's still, you know, if it if it'll get us on a vacation, it might be worth it. <laughs> Exactly. exactly. Well, thank you so very much, April. And I, I'm just so thrilled that you are able to, to carve out a little bit of your day to come and educate people on the importance of and how to properly pick out a pet sitter. Um, yeah. So with that, really, really quickly before I let y'all go, I do want to remind you if you are listening or if you're watching the video, um, the merch is live. So play with your dog is the t-shirt that I have on today. It is so absolutely adorable. And if you join the Patreon family, you get a, an extra discount code. So go to the petparentingreset.com, click on Patreon first, join the Patreon family, get your discount code, go over to the merch tab and get your hands on the play with your dog t-shirt or any of the other t-shirts that I have shown you or talked to you about if you are only listening on the podcast um go to the merch so you can see how absolutely adorable these designs are they are brand new in november thank you all so much for being part of the pet parenting reset and being that 2.0 pet parent that i know you can be with that i'll talk to you guys next week bye oh, oh.